Hi everyone, this is Ming Yao from Singularity Engineering and in this video we'll be looking at how do we use ANSYS Explicit to model explosives. We're going to start with an explicit dynamics analysis system and we're going to work, work our way down from the top here. So the first thing we need when we're doing an, exp an explosive simulation is to select some ex add some explosives to our material properties. Luckily with ANSYS Explicit or Autodyne in this case uh, we have a large, a wide range of predefined explosives based on properties already ca uh, calculated or experimentally ver verified for us. So for example, we can add a standard C4 explosive into our simulation. Clicking on the little plus sign here copies that material into our materials database. You can see there's also co compound A, compound B. Uh, we have H HMX, uh, TNT, and inert, and HMX explosives. We have a wide range of LX explosives, so I'll leave the rest of it. Uh, we can also add some aluminum materials to it. Now note the aluminum materials specified here have an equation of state that only works for solid materials. I'm going to start with the shell materials. So I'm going to copy a nonlinear um, nonlinear aluminum into our library. Uh, we also have the ANSYS Granta tools which allows us to gather material property from virtually any material we're interested in. So this is a nonlinear aluminum alloy. We have the Young's modulus and a basic isotropic hardening model. Uh, typically we want to add some sort of failure because with explosive simulations we expect things to break. So I'm going to put in a plastic strain model here and say that the, the material will start eroding once it exceeds the plastic strain. Um, so you can see that this actually goes to point 0.2, so once it hits this point, we'll say if it goes past that point, 0.2, uh, 20% strain, the material will be eroded away. So let's create a basic model here using space claim. We're going to create uh, an explosive and a piece of steel, a uh, piece of aluminum, and we're going to set off the explosive, see what happens. Okay, so this will be a simple, very simple model, and you can obviously use various different tools to create uh, geometries like this. So I'll just do a really small piece of explosive here. We'll call this piece. Uh, I'll just call it C4, and then. put it on uh, some sort of a large plate. Mm, maybe a little bit bigger. Okay, so I'm doing a surface right now, a shell model to keep the computational speed quick. And now we can set up our simulation. You can see the setup is really simple. You model the parts you want to model. Um, the solids and ANSYS will take care of the rest. Okay, here's our geometry. You can see we have a piece of C4 here as well as a piece of aluminum. We're going to go down the list here. So this is our C4 material which will be a Eulerian material and then this is our one millimeter thick aluminum nonlinear alloy. This has detected a contact, but that's not going to make sense when we have a, a Eulerian material, so we're going to suppress this contact. And for the meshing, let's, uh, 10 millimeters is quite large. Let's try 5 millimeter for the mesh. Um, obviously, the more refined the mesh is, the more accurate the simulation, but in this case uh, we want the simulation to run fairly quickly, so I'm going to keep the mesh deliberately coarse. I'm going to run this for a uh, tenth of a millisecond, so it's a very short high-energy event here. 
want to scale the y by a factor of 10 here and probably by a, a factor of 3 in these areas. Um, so this tells you our Olarian region. When the explosion happens, the, the material, the um, the explosive material, C4, when it gets converted into a gas, will go all over here. So now let's, uh, I guess we don't really need to, um, I'm not going to constrain this actually. I think I'll just leave, leave the plate floating in air here. And I'll just put a detonation point. So this is where the detonation will happen for our explosive. And the detonation here will start at uh, detonation time is 0 second. And we'll detonate that C4 and see what happens. There's an option to do some result tracker. This seemed to be leading to some crashes in this release, so I'm not going to use that. I'll just go ahead and run the simulation now. Oh, I think I know what's going on. I think the mesh, my, my uh, explosive is too small here, and the mesh for this is too big for the Olarian region, so it's not capturing it. Let me make this a little bit smaller. I think that's going to help us capture that. And then we'll do a factor of 5 here. So now you can see the, the mesh size relative to the mesh size of my, my block is much better. So hopefully this will pick out some more uh, results here. And we can um, we want to adjust the output. I'm going to do 50 points in the duration of the simulation to see if we can capture the explosion here. Okay, let's see what the result looks like here. Oh, much better. So here you can see that uh, once we refine the mesh, we actually have the region where the explosive is. So the way this explosive is defined is that it has to overlap with the mesh in the Eulerian region. So we have a few options. We can increase the number of elements. Uh, in the region, you can see that we have uh, there's a total cell count option, or we can specify cell size or cell per component. So there's different ways, but you can see that because we overlap some of it, it um, we have this much explosive in initially, and then once we detonate it, it looks like this. So once the simulation, the animation is going, you can see how it, it got blown up here, like that. So that's a quick example of how to set up an explosive simulation in ANSYS Explicit. If you like this video, please uh, give us a like and subscribe. Uh, feel free to contact us at www.singularityeng.com. Have a good day. Thank you.